Madam Chairman, distinguished guest Bob, thank you for your very kind words. You know, the, uh, the fact is, Bob, that uh, I'm glad you didn't tell me more than that, what the real truth was, but I want to say that uh, it's, a, it's a joy to be here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I, I was wondering what the age limit of the crowd here, and I see so many people here of my generation that I, I feel I can, uh, we can talk about phone sound and uh, you'll know what I'm talking about. But um, I think tonight about the fellow in Chicago wanted to send a birthday present to his mother in New York. And so he thought he'd buy her something different, unusual, so he, he bought her a talking parrot. And he sent it to her, and a few days later he called her and he said, uh, Mother, did you get my present? She said, yes, it was delicious. <laughs> and he said, uh, you didn't eat that bird, did you? She said, yes, I did. He said, that bird could speak five languages. She said, why didn't he say something? <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to say something, in fact, uh, with great admiration for the job this organization is doing. And I want to talk tonight about the wonderful place in which we live. Will Rogers once said he never met a, a man he didn't like. Over the years, I, I think that I can most times say that. Sometimes if it did not, it's probably my own fault. But So tonight I'd like to talk about memories of yesteryears in this beautiful place of own sound. The story is told about a member of the society who came up to the speaker. After he finished, and he said, you were much better than the speaker we had at our last meeting. He spoke for an hour and said nothing. I said, thank you very much. Yes, she said, but you did it in 15 minutes. <laughs> I think uh, the words of uh, the priest was talking to an old lady. I'm telling you about St. Augustine, who was in youth, was a very uh, dissolute young man in Rome, but who later became uh, one of the great leaders of the church. And the priest said to the old lady, he said, you know, dear old lady, the greater the sinner, the greater the saint. And the old lady said, I wish to God I'd known that 40 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, 40 or 50 years ago, pardon me for talking about myself personally, but it leads to the things that I want to talk about. But I, I do want to say that um, when I was a uh, uh, 40, 50 years ago, more than that, I worked at the RCA Victor, and uh, I was making five cents an hour then, and the take-home pay of two dollars and fifty cents a week. Memories of those days, we had simple things to <clears throat> remember at the own sound race with the most famous team in all Canada. And we would stand most nights in the zero weathers down in front of the sometimes on Main Street, facing a bed sheet across on Lee's store, and they would phone in the results of the plays and write it out and photograph and put it on the screen up there. And when I said that which Keeling uh, passed to, to Cooney Whelan and got a goal, we stand and cheer our heads off. And this was a, a far sheet. When you look think of that, there's no TV then. And uh, I think of how far we have come. I remember when I was a paper boy at the Sun Times, we received two and a half cents a paper a week. My dad was a union man, C.C. Upper, and he thought that was awful. He advised me to get all the boys at a meeting and, and have a strike. <laughs> so I thought it was a good idea, so I raised up with 25 of the kids with me on Friday not to deliver our papers. So they were organized, I thought, so we all stood around and refused to take the papers. Mr. Howard Fleming came up the back and he says, 
from the raw assembly, and he's who's responsible for this? And I said, I am, Mr. Fleming. What's your name? And he started, he's your fire. <laughs> <laughs> he looked at me and he said, you're fired and won't ever come back here again. And this is my first experience with politics and big business. <laughs> Town was a, a wonderful place to live, to grow up. We didn't have much money, but the people of the city as a whole were kind, and a lot of people were in the same boat. Every year we had to cross the bay swims, horse races on the bay, on the ice in the wintertime, sleigh riding down 9th Street West Hill. Swimming holes in the Potawatomi, in Harrison Park, and uh, the great Henry Kelso, the one armed principal of Victoria School. He formed hockey leagues, which started us to be the greatest hockey league in Canada. He started people like Benny Grant, Butch Keeling, Teddy Graham, Cooney Whelan, and later on in the years, people like Pat McGrady and Jerry Reed. And I also recall that that league was the, was, the, was the breeding place for good hockey players. And even people like Harold Vanity and Terry Pembroke and Sliver Atten were part of that league. We'd go down to the fire hall at night to see the horses, when the bells rang, the horses run up, and the harnesses would fall down on the horses. That was wonderful. We could fire fires. And you really had something to talk about if you got the captain to go upstairs and get on his back and he get on the pole and slide down. That was one thing that most kids didn't happen to. Who can forget memories? The softball battles between the Wamanitas and the Lady Grays. Bill Garbutt was a key man in sports then, and a manager of the arena in 11th Street East, before the J.D. MacArthur Arena, Bayshore Drive. Remember the Boyd Street rink on 8th Street, where we, the band played the music, and the, you had 10 bands a night, and if you had 10 dates for each, or 10 partners for each, it was pretty good. Manitoba Weekly Cruises, bought many visits to own sound, and uh, getting on to education with the great list of teachers at the OCDI, Mr. Emsley and Mr. Critter. Own sound has had many great citizens. When you look back, the Keenans, the Flemings, the Christies, the McLaughlins. I spent five or six years working for a man named Jim Carter. A good Catholic, I was a Protestant. But his, his son, Cyril Carter, became Father Carter. And he was my, really my second father. Jim Carter was. At school, I wasn't a very excellent student, I don't think. I don't know why, but I just didn't seem to get many marks. But when I graduated, I said I'd print a newspaper. So about 19 or 20, I started a newspaper called The Booster. Doing it. And I made money. <laughs> Recall one day a story written by mother Jack, my brother Jack. He was a, a good writer. And he suggested a murder trial that Judge Morley had conducted was wrong in many directions. And uh, the decision. Uh, by Judge Morley, when he read that, I was to be charged in court, and I had to appear before him on a, uh, on a very serious charge. And so, uh, when I went to have the trial, my lawyer didn't show up, <laughs> and I was found guilty and uh, fined $150 or 10 days. I wanted to give the court a check, they wouldn't take it. <laughs> and I think it was cool and Bennett. <coughs> that came a reprimand, I think, that came through and said that they would vote for me by Booktown 
get the hundred dollars and come to the and give it back to them. I thought I'd give them a nice up check, which I've done before. <laughs> so they gave me an hour to bring it back, and uh, lucky at the Royal Bank gave me the money. Own sound for many years was dry. But we had lots of lots of bootleggers. My paper is a booster. Campaigned against the dries for a wet pool. And eventually went wet. I recall when Owen Sound was dry. I had the mayor of Hamilton and his board of control up looking at our car department, which was something unusual to do for me by. And I had the definition of the mayor's office. That time the mayor's office in Owen Sound was, you could walk in off the street into the mayor's office, the old building. So we had our meeting there with Mayor of Hamilton and his board of control. And after the meeting, they said that they'd like a drink. So I picked up the phone and I phoned the bootlegger and I said, bring me down a jug down to my office. And so, a few minutes later, they knocked in the door and we were giving me the bottle and I paid him. So we all had drinks. So at all mayor's conventions, the Sam, the mayor of Hamilton, the mayor of Hamilton would always get up and tell about the mayor of Owen Sound had a bootlegger come to his office. <laughs> Then on, Alan Stewart, our city clerk, always kept the jug or bottle in his office. <laughs> I eventually became president of the Mayors and Reeves Association of Canada, up in Ontario, sorry, and became close friends with Bob Saunders, who was chairman of Hydro, because um, I had been with him when I was on the Mayors and Reeves. And so Bob Saunders and I became very good friends. And in that, when he made a trip out west to a football game, I'd, I'd be called and I'd go down and go with him. And um, one businessman in Owen Sound uh, knew I was a good friend of Hydro, so he called me up and he said, We are going to have a bid on a contract for stock logs. And I'm wondering if you can get after Saunders and get us a contract. So. Naturally, I, I went to work on it. I made an appointment to see Bob and down to see him. And this was a colossal project. And uh, that he would give me, this man said he would give me a great percentage of the deal. Then I had my house up at Middlebush Drugstore, and I had a secretary called Look, and my business secretary was Louis Pilgrim, and I kept the door open. And he offered me a piece of the action. This big businessman on the sound. And I said, there'd be no deal like that at all. I won't go after it. He said, well, that's there if you want it. Anyway, a few, years, a few months later, one time, Bob Summers called me. He said, do you hear the news? And I said, well, I give the contract to your friend on the sound.
I think it was, was really cool on my part to do that, but it sold, it sold the point that, uh, that we had a good um, tax situation. In the legislature, I was ejected from the House for 11 times. <laughs> I'm not proud of that, but uh, the first time I was ejected, the uh, speaker said, uh, Sergeant Major, Sergeant Major Geary, B.C., beautiful old man, he was loved by everybody, carried the sword, that was his authority. And so he came to my desk and asked me if I would come with him. I said, surely, Sergeant Majors. I out, walked out with him, took me down to his office, opened the bottle, and we sat there all day, and the house had no Sergeant Major that day. <laughs> <laughs> These were inside things that maybe people don't know about, but uh, I'm not ashamed of anything because uh, that's life. We had a we had a, a great hockey team in the legislature. Silax was a member, member for Kingston, and he was our center man. We did it went around the country doing benefits. He had taken still took me in to see Ballard, and I got to know Ballard this way very closely. That we would have two two hours every week. Wednesday from 12 till 2 for the legislature team. And in infinity. And uh, with that in mind, I was proud to bring them, our team. My wife at that point was on the hospital board and she wanted a fundraiser for the, for the hospital. So I said to sell out a known sound. Well, we packed the arena that night, our new arena, and we, everything was just going wonderfully well. And Jerry Reed, who'd been the star with Detroit, was playing for Owen Sound against us. And as you came around the net to make a rush, Don Deacon is the nicest guy in the world. Just gave him a little bump of the shoulder, and, he, and Jerry went into, into the boards. Don broke his neck and died in the ice. That stopped all of our, our, our moves around the country doing this. And I, I uh, want to say that in my years as mayor and many members of the legislature and Whatever. I've had many ups and downs, but memories of the wonderful people come to my mind. Ross Witcher, Wyerton, who was very not very healthy today, very in shape. He had a fiery, was one of the best speakers and a very fiery speaker. How the galleries would fill up when Elmer Sofa, and Sudbury was a speaker. And the brilliant Stephen Lewis is now on Serving us in the world scene was a was a true friend and a beautiful man, great speaker. But still asked, tied in with these people, we needed a wonderful period in our life. But most important, nice to be able to see a need. Fight it and see it through. My mother took a heart attack and uh, got in the hospital. Couldn't get her room. And she died in the hospital, in the hall, the hospital. Beautiful lady. And I have vivid memories of my fight with Prima Davis for days on end in the legislature for a hospital known as Senate. When finally, I said to the finger, I said, Bill, if you will give me a hospital, I'll resign. 
And all that says, give it to me. <laughs> the premier knew that for knew that for a good chance that we would do the same thing we did for I did for Chesley. Every day Chesley to bring busloads of people down from Chesley down to get their hospital. And my good friend Frank Miller, sorry, he was the minister of health. He gave them off. A few days later, Peter Davis called me, Eddie. He says, Come on, I want to talk to you. I'm going to give you a hug. And uh, We've come this far. We've not learned the right way to live together, but 
we are seeing the papers today that, that democracy is creeping more into Europe. But McLuhan's global village is a reality, at least in a technical sense. But we have come as far as we can go, <clears throat> but we cannot get together.